Hey you guys, it's the 25th of October today and this is my last installment for the Angel of Death. I'm almost finished with him. Um, just got a couple more days worth of work to do on him since the last update. Uh, number 14, I have painted the torso. I have painted the head in here and I've attached the arms and I've attached uh, the wings with the material, the fabric. Um, there is a little bit of painting left to do on the body, uh, some touch-up stuff of the gray color that I'm using, and then I'm going to go back over with uh, a dry brush technique for uh, using a dark gray color probably on the dry brush. And let me back up here and see if I can do so without falling down, and that way you guys can get the full scope of it. This garage is a mess because of working on him. So back it up here. And as you can see, the wings are on, and everything takes up just about the entire length of my garage. Uh, his wingspan is about 12 feet, 12 feet total in length, uh, 6 feet on either side, pretty much. If I come over here to kind of give you a point of reference, you can see uh, from fingertip to fingertip, for me, if I stretch my arms out, I'm a little over 6 feet. So there's... This is at the edge of the wing back here, and there's uh, where my hand comes to. And uh, anyway, like I was saying, though, I've attached the arms since the last time. And I'll pull this back. The arms are, uh, this is wooden dowel. Uh, I don't remember the size on it exactly, but it's, it's about an inch, inch and an eighth, or an inch and a fourth. Uh, another wooden dowel down here. And what I did was I notched notch these two dowels out where they meet you can't see it now because I actually put mache over it as well just to help hold it a little bit tighter but I notched them out sort of like Lincoln logs it's the same exact premise that I did on the wings on the joints of the wings these are smaller dowels of course but right there at the joint I notched them uh, if you ever played with Lincoln logs as a kid you know how they fit together and what that looks like so I created that notch and then I put um, I love gorilla anything gorilla glue uh, gorilla Glue now makes a, a wood glue, so I put Gorilla Glue in there, and the same here, put Gorilla Glue in here on this joint as well, and as uh, I applied the two joints together with the Gorilla Glue in between, I sunk in a couple of drywall screws, and that seemed to hold everything in place pretty good, and then what I did was I took a bar tie wire, just to guarantee that uh, I got a tight, secure hold here, took a bar tie wire, drilled a hole through the forearm region, tied off the ran the bar tie through tied it off and then I uh, attached the bar tie wire around a drywall screw and screwed it in up here and cinched it down even tighter to guarantee it would hold uh, up in the top region where it's attached to the uh, base back here it's hard to see but I've got a let's see I've got a bracket on here uh, it's like the kind of a bracket or a brace that you put a shelf on the wall with it's an L bracket uh, but I just bent it down so it made more like a, a U shape and then I've put a screw and drywall screw in the top and a drywall screw underneath. And for the forearm, I took a Bucky, Bucky forearm. I don't have one right in front of me here, but, and I cut the Bucky forearm in half, and not even in half actually, I just took like maybe a third off the end of it. And I attached uh, the Bucky forearm to the wooden dowel on either side with uh, drywall screws. And then I put a little mache over that as well. And then I came in here and on his hands, the Bucky hands, I um, ran some duct tape off of the Bucky hands to hold down back on the joints to hold them up because the Bucky hands will get unwieldy. Uh, if you take the, um, there's a metal metal spring that goes between the Bucky fingers. And it doesn't look very good if you leave it on the prop. So I took that spring out and then what happens is the fingers just, they lose, uh, they don't have any tension left so they just are all over the place. So then I took duct tape, tied it around the fingers, uh, attached it down to the um, uh, to, to, to the carpals, uh, the metacarpals and all that here in the wrist. And um, I think that's the right, <laughs> my anatomy, I think that's the correct uh, term on that. But anyway, uh, so that held it in place and then I put mache over all of that on the hand to keep the fingers up. And then I took um, some more of that bar tie wire that's uh, what's wrapped around down here and you can find those at any hardware store bar ties home depot has them uh they use it on uh um rebar steel and so I, or you can use a coat hanger same thing that'll work too then i took bar tie wire uh clipped it about yay long something like that and then duct taped it to the bucky fingers 
and duct tape all the way down and then uh, just went back over uh, with a layer or two of mache and textured as well and you can see the texture underneath here and I put a little bit of texture on the top and his cloak when it gets put on it's going to be covering uh, right to about here something like that and the same thing was done on the, uh, the other arm as well you can see all the kind of shreds and tears and all that good stuff in there and then the wings um, let me pull this down again he looks naked without that on now <laughs> I want to try to get the rest of the shroud done tomorrow, hopefully after I do finish the touch-up on the paint, and that'll be it, he'll be finished, but anyway, on the wings here, his wing, back up, his wing is sort of like a combo between a bat wing and a bird wing. I tried stretching the uh, muslin material tight, uh, like a drum, you know, really tight, tight in there, and I didn't really like that look, I think it has a little bit of a creepier look when you put the uh, folds to it and kind of like the pleats in there in the material and then along the bottom I just went in and shredded that with a uh, razor blade and a combination of scissors and that's pretty much it guys that's where um, he stands I've got like I said a couple more days to finish him up and then there's a lot of other preparation stuff to uh, get ready for the haunt but uh, I want to thank you guys for the process joining me on this uh, this entire journey all 15 of these videos I've loved making them I hope um, I hope uh, anything I've been able to share and provide is, has helped a little bit for you guys as far as making your own props as well uh, I'm not at all anywhere near an expert but I just learn as I go along and try to pass along what I learned to you guys so thanks so much for joining me I really appreciate it um, again, this will be the last update because I'm not going to have time prior to Halloween to do one more with um, his shroud and his cloak that's going to be attached. But uh, that's not going to take too long, I don't think. I don't anticipate it taking more than a day or two. And, of course, I will have my Halloween 2010 photos up sometime the first or second week of November so you guys can check those out and see him in the haunt and how uh, everything turned out so I appreciate it again uh, guys thanks for joining me have a great uh, Halloween and uh, I'm going to be starting a new prop in November probably late November early December and I will start uh, the 2011 updates on the new prop as well